It's a locust to alienate. Ten April 25th, 2020. Of that which is holy. Alienate and destruction of that which is holy. Do you ever wonder about that scripture where Jesus said, he asked about paying taxes and is it those that are conquered or those that are conquered? Those that are conquered pay the taxes. Yeah, I, I tried paying them, but J.K. Harrison Company ripped me off. 526 to alienate 10 destruction 40 that which is sacred alienate destruction of that which is sacred and it's a bug it looks like a, a metal locust and let's see what's on his chest an upside down triangle you guys notice the pattern now let's look at Mickey Mouse real quick. <laughs> what does Mickey mean? Oh jeez, it means to. Mickey means to tease and ridicule incessantly. To tease and to ridicule. To rob and tease. I know. Let me tell you something. As a personal testimony, my brother Jeff, he used to give me Mickey Mouse for my birthday for Christmas. He was always like, yeah, man, you like it? I, was, I always wonder, like, what the hell is wrong with this guy, man? He just gets off to this, giving me Mickey when he's just trying, trying to tell me, like, you're so Mickey Mouse, like, you know, whatever. What he was trying to say. I had no idea, but now I know it's the two in one in their system. That's why he did it. Mickey, two T's are ridicule. Or whether he's being sarcastic or facetious. You can certainly see that in the words that he would have is that he's not right in front of us watching him say it so we can actually glean some uh what'd you say about me so then i can try to understand why different religions see things in different ways and where their interpretations may be misguided for certain reasons maybe political maybe social at the time so really trying to get down to the root of christ's words and really what he was trying to say. The difficult part that we have is that he's not right in front of us watching him say it so we can actually glean some, uh, you know, something that he's uh, intimating or whether he's being sarcastic or she's being facetious. I mean, you can certainly see that um, in the words that he would be and by the attitude. Yeah, I can see that. So Christ was pretty sarcastic. So I just wanted to read to you from, uh, and this is Matthew 11. 11. I just recognized that Matthew 11. So, <laughs> truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the one who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, so let's just think about this for a second. Among those born of women. So, among those born of women. How are you going to help us freedom? Born of women. Unless you're willing to take on a There's no one greater than. Here it says, Thus saith the Lord God, the self existing eternal Job, because my heart is lifted up to now and said, I am the Almighty God, you know, the Ram, Hell, the Ram, Hell, because thou said, I am Hell, and the Ram, 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 Hell, and the more conservative because John is known to be an Essene. And the Essenes had a very strict, very uh, strict Torah rules. And they didn't really abide by the Pharisees and Sadducees are the Talmudists of that day. Keep that in mind. You know, whatever. So they are still at that time most likely those that say they are Jews but lie according to the scripture. And that's a, a, another video. That's, that's you. <laughs> yeah. Because listen to this. Says, There's no one greater than John the Baptist, so he's almost being facetious. Or 
He's being truthful and honest, but at the same time being facetious. Because see, he's great. There's no one greater than him in the world. But in the kingdom, he's nothing is what he says. The one that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. He can be the greatest here, but he's nothing. Now, so that sets the stage for reading this a little bit differently. I had no idea, but now I know it's... From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. That would be us. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom has been taken with violence against those want the kingdom. It sounds like to me It sounds like the Jew had become an enemy of Jesus. Kinda, yeah. Not necessarily an enemy where he wants to hurt him. But he's become a tool for the world. That's blasphemy. The Bible says you're God. And I think it's So he's like, well, so they the have no arguments. So they, they have zero arguments to stone him. How are you going to stone him after that? Can't. It's like, uh... That's why Harold's a pilot. Oh, you know. 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 Okay, now let's go back to where it all started. So, see, Jesus even said... Your own scriptures say, I yes. said ye are God. So it says it right here. So Jesus said, Your own scriptures yes. say, ye are God. Yes. And he was quoting Psalm 82. Yes. So let's go to Psalm 82. Yes. And then we're going back to Psalm 82. It says it right there that they all are marked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. You know why? There are a bunch of gods that got put in those bodies. That's what he's saying. He's like, hey, they walk in there. They're not going to understand. They walk on in darkness because they got in all those bodies, which is in total darkness. Changing the way society sees things. Changing Two words. In one, it's their it's system. Lost. That's why he did it. Everything. The key. Changing. Cheese or ridicule with sickening enthusiasm. That's why this scripture gets even more That's exactly my brother giving me Mickey Mouse stuff. Now. But to what shall I compare the kingdom of heaven? You mean that, brother? This is interesting. This is again. Going back to what attitude is he saying? But to what shall I compare this generation? Hmm. It is like, so he asks a question and then answers his own question. That being simply facetious. It is like children sitting in the market. Holding <laughs> their fingers. They're from the ASP. 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 Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
So how problem. do you take it? Because see, is that the market of beast, or is it a bring people? Is it the things that they want? Is it the tattoo that you're supposed to get? But they don't upside down. Agree with that outward. Right side up triangle. That's what the false flag is. Or do you? So they could do you take it where it's the person standing in the middle demon, even of both of the said. triangles when the guy is on the stand and he's standing in the middle the of, son of man both of the triangles came eating as and drinking and they say, look at him in between what? both sides a drunkard, a friend of tax collector, and so yet wisdom is justified by so think about this for a second so either he's saying that he came eating and drinking, and they call him a drunkard, which many people will say that Jesus didn't drink, of course, drink wine, of course. But there is a much deeper story which goes to that, which has come out of some of the Vatican archives, where people have claimed to have a story about Jesus where he had gone through some very traumatic times in his life that triggered his awakening. That he lost his wife and his kids. Wrong. Have been called. So he was probably Me thrown out of the having a conversation for becoming a drunken fool and family. So you're saying you're going to die on 420? I mean, no, wait, so 421 already passed by. Justified by her you're saying Maybe May 21st. Uh, okay. But you accidentally pretended you purposely didn't say that. You were me by my His dad killed him. You were so to say Dan, cheers. I would say we should probably take that. Now we have a few left after that. I'm not going to the distributor or grabbing anything else. My cards are more important than the distributor or words. You'll see exterior right here. That paper is going to rise. together with another you. So, with you? that said, what I want to talk to you about is who you really are in this situation when you're in Christ, because this is key. You have to understand that the things that are taking place with the evangelical church pushing Zionism, they're not understanding that they, they believe they're doing the right thing in many cases. But their pushing of a crowned Messiah is going to come to a crashing halt. Because at some point, those people are going to be standing there. They're not going to be in the haze of the stardom and everything. They're going to be coming to terms with the reality is that they have crowned a single man, the Messiah that has the power over all nations in a new world order under a very strict regime, no longer in world law run through the Hague, but in Jerusalem. If you think for one second that this isn't taking place, then you must be absolutely blind to the things that are taking place. We have a very quick movement of evangelical... You are on my mind, Derek. ...as we know it today as the organized religion church moving very quickly with political stature to basically push for... And their single world government. When you look at it as mother and daughter, and Emily Clegg says, see it as father and son, like the father and the son. She's woke, the little girl, she's kind of like, like a little nerd, like, just like freaked out. But the, the mother is walking stern, not afraid. 
You're supposed to think if you're on the Luciferian side, you got two two eyes down. You're supposed to think that that's you. You guys are the ones that have the mark, the, the tattoo, wherever it is. And in doing so, tattoo. All of those men, women, and children, all over the world. And then we're supposed to be the the people that are run down, and we're the ones hating on you guys because you guys are going to be ratchet about it and taken to the party. Of what they know about who Christ was and who Christ is right now, and they're going to then see the people like myself and others that speak these things about Christianity and Zionism, the Adam Green. The, uh, is really the the attitude. The These people have gone out of their way. An old guy. To show you the little girl's a little freaked out. It's an amazing job, which is why we don't necessarily have a need to continually push on that when information is out there. And so we give a piece where we find yeah, the value. But all of well. this is coming to pass. And for those that's up for you to that figure out why that is saying that. This isn't here for is Again, that the house Christ that needs to repent still saying that? Just know that what I told you is true. They don't see these things. Yeah, you know, they're not liked by us. It's there to confirm your faith, so you know that you are on that path. Now at that point, when that evangelical church collapses, psychologically, so she gets up out of bed, and doctrinally, if they won't understand, and the daughter's on, there still, so it's like one of them is, they will the bed, then remember the up, likes of all of us, hopping on who the sounded horse, these alarms, going into and at town, once they're going to feel like they don't know anything, just basically so by herself, out the streets. In Christ, that know exactly what is going on. You are the leadership. See, this is how they do it. They, they put the script, and then they just follow it around, put it on a stick. You find it odd that the Magic Kingdom villas they have two U's joined together by whatever this clubhouse thing is. And there is Walt Disney in, in front of the Magic Kingdom. Wow, it's all blue. Did anyone ever notice the Magic Kingdom was all blue? And does that look like a big V with an like I in the middle? <laughs> it's like, uh, so let's take a look at the Magic Kingdom. So remember I showed you this represents two different, like this represents the one race, this represents the other race coming together into what you call the earth, the little vortex where they all go into, where we're all burned out of, so let me just give you a representation of it. Here's a blue U and a red U, and this represents just like, this is the egg of Eve. So here's Genesis 1, here's Genesis 2, and here's Genesis 3 right here. So and here's the representation of, I'll, we'll, we'll put it like this, the serpent. This is the, here's the representation of, I'll, we'll, we'll put it like this, the serpent. This is the egg of Eve, this is Adam. So here we go. We can call it serpent, Satan. Don't forget, Not serpent, afraid. Satan, devil's representative, the devil's representative, Christ's representative, Cain, evil, Abel, good. So this is the system. That's why they call it the magic kingdom. Here, I've taken the same thing, and I simply put a sperm by the ear, and a sperm by the ear, so you can just make the connection. There it is. That's why they call it the magic kingdom. Here's a blue U and a red U, and this represents just like this is the egg of Eve. So here's Genesis 1, here's Genesis 2, and here's Genesis 3, right here. So, and here's the representation of, 
Uh, we'll, we'll put it like this, the serpent. This is the egg of Eve. This is even if you had a really great imagination. I mean, look at that. That's the eye from uh, from the Chanel thing. I, I actually, no, I had Dave put Omatidia over half a human eye. It's exactly what happens. Here you go. Let me show you a couple more energy mixed together. Look what's on the female's arm, the serpent. See it? Here's a girl with a lovely tattoo on the back of her neck of an all-seeing eye with a scorpion. Why would you have that tattoo? It's exactly correct. Here's a bee tattoo on the back of this guy's leg with the all-seeing eye. I don't know if it's a bee, you know, maybe it's a guy playing. Here is Extreme RVs. It's a show. That's a bug. That's the eye. That's the eye. And that's the mouth. And it makes an X. It's very simple to see Here's the double-headed phoenix. There's the head, there's the head. I can take the head of the serpent. The double-headed phoenix wearing a crown. The crown is a serpent. Because the ser this is out of the Catholic Church. The crown is a serpent head. So you have one head of the phoenix, male, the other one female. The serpent rules over the male and female. There it is. The serpent rules the male-female system from Genesis 1, and that's what Jesus came to rectify. He came to rectify the two different things in one body. His purpose was to create one new man from the two, thus making peace. He'll fix this and this to where they both become one through the cross, and you get two eyes that are up. Not one up, one down, two that are up, and you can see the truth. Oh! oh. I love you guys. Peace and grace. Pizza and grapes. The end of the world's here. Be encouraged. The time's coming. I don't know the hour of the day, but I can assure you this. If you're not paying attention today, then you're not paying attention at all. You need to be ready, awake, confessed, walking towards the finish line. You don't have to run. Just walk in peace. Just be at peace. Look at what you know. You know the truth. There's nothing to be afraid of. We know how the story ends. We've already won. You gotta tell a guy in a little bit, today, yeah, I did this. You don't tell him everything. The you title did it, of the true gospel is your voice in your voice. You're not gonna. That is because Malia and I are going to be doing a, uh, I would say, I, I call it a documentary style video. Uh, don't don't look for a two hour documentary. Uh, that's not what this is going to be about. But what it is, is um, Malia is a, a phenomenal researcher. She's obviously trained in, uh, in journalism. So she's a, a, a journalist by, by trade and by training. So we felt that it would be good for her to treat the, uh, the understanding that I've been speaking about here on the Global Witness Channel here for well over a year to treat it as though it would be an investigative story. Dig in and ask the very, very difficult questions. And um, that way I can explain things in a succinct way in a single video that allows you to share that and send it to somebody. And if they understand what is spoken of in that, then they can come and they can get a, a more in-depth understanding within the videos themselves because the Alpha Omega playlist um, is obviously quite long. And anybody that hasn't everything. watched that Don't really should, so you stuff. can understand. <laughs> now, this channel has um, primarily been about the teachings. My focus has always been about the truth of the words of Christ, and in helping people understand that in a depth that the church today isn't telling you. And that way you can recognize just how far the church has come. You can recognize what the great falling away actually is. And you can begin to witness the world around you um, in a way that you never have before. So, um, with that said, the 
purpose of this, as I said, and this is why I'm asking everybody to send questions that you would have. Now, this would be things that when you've spoken about the teachings that have been spoken on this channel, when you've spoken to other people about it, either family or friends or strangers, whoever you've spoken to, uh, the questions that you've received that you couldn't answer, or questions that came up as a result of it. So you, you get to you get a good understanding of what the dogma that you've been hit with back, resulting from your conversations. And that way I can include those questions within this video. And as I said, it'll be shot in edited documentary style. And um, we're gonna go into great depth with the um, within the teachings and within the understandings. And obviously, as Malia and I have always spoken about, we don't always agree, and she doesn't always agree with the positions that I have. So she, many of the questions will be her own. And, um, which she's already asked me and I've already answered, and even sometimes when I answer, she still doesn't gravitate towards that. So that's perfectly fine. That's why I love her so much that uh, she, um, and she is free to disagree with me, and that is um, perfectly fine. No, so it ain't. Be, um, so I'm gonna be, as I said, Doesn't sound like it's a perfectly of, fine. A lot of requests here on this channel to cover um, world events. People asking me about the, the burning of Notre Dame, what I think about, uh, what I think about that, what I think about um, I pet goat looking like uh, the Antichrist or the Christ figure, either one, whichever you see it as, comes out in the church falls, and many people think it looks like uh, that the uh, that the temple itself has a crumbling looks much like Notre Dame. Well, um, aside from the spire, I don't think it looks like Notre Dame, but the spire itself falling is eerily like the spire falling on Notre Dame when it was burning. And uh, so I'm coming to you. Derek, can you just keep your face still? Stop turning to the side. Thanks. Is celebrating as Easter. So I prefer not to celebrate Ishtar's um, life by celebrating this day. Uh, I don't think anybody has a, uh, somebody saying it's lots of buffer, I'm sorry about that, if it's buffering to everybody, it looks like it's doing fine on my end, I can see. And, um, coming to you from the beautiful location that has been donated temporarily for, uh, for myself and Malia to stay, so thank you again, we love you for, for this, uh, for this place that we can stay for now. So, um, the... This day, Easter, to most Christians, um, most certainly comes from Ishtar, which is why we have little bunnies with eggs. Obviously, bunnies don't lay eggs. Um, they actually give birth to babies, but uh, the bunny, Ishtar, is the goddess of fertility. Oh, I got him coming to is life. Represented within the bunny itself, because obviously bunnies are quite fertile. Get out of me, Derek! And that is exactly who Ishtar <laughs> or Semiramis is. Uh, right there. So, um, with that said, I'm just going to point you to a video, and um, I'll share the screen here so you can see. You can't be me, Derek. Let me get up here. Apologize one second. I'm not two-faced. So, this is a video the true meaning of Easter from Richie from Boston I think he yeah uh, one of your employees I know he's really good he's really good at his job Kurt Washington was actually made president in April because obviously um, being who he was of the presidency uh, that um, it didn't have the same structure as we have now where president there <laughs> uh, are you year. my brother but he was made president in April and considering that he was a 33 degree mason and that he was the head of the luciferian regime that was the beginning of all of this and that took place in the month of april so there's no uh there's no accident to that sounds like you're describing the, yourself 33. um lincoln assassination also took place in april just uh, some notes here that i have oklahoma city bombing boston bombings this is the luciferian blood sacrifice month abortion was legalized in april well, there you go there's lots of sacrifices going on there uh, Waco, the Branch Davidians were burned and killed in April. Hitler was born in April, ironically. Um, the Titanic sank, and there are lots of reasons for that.
Steve said I'm me and Barack Obama are twins. I don't see the resemblance. Oh, the head fits. I got I got hair now. Take out the mastermind of 9-11. That would be Jonathan Cleck. If I had told you that we would win marriage equality and secure the right to health insurance for another 20 million of our fellow citizens, We all manage our way through a pandemic unlike anything we've seen in a century. Michelle and I hope that you and your families are safe and well. And if there's one thing we've learned as a country from moments of great crisis, it's that the spirit of looking out for one another can't be restricted to our homes, or our workplaces, or our neighborhoods, or our houses of worship. It also has to be reflected in our national government. The kind of leadership that's guided by knowledge and experience, honesty and humility, empathy and grace. That kind of leadership doesn't just belong in our state capitals and mayor's offices, it belongs in the White House. And that's why I'm so proud to endorse Joe Biden for President of the United States. Choosing Joe to be my Vice President was one of the best decisions I ever made when he became a close friend. I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in a president right now. He's someone whose own life has taught him how to persevere, how to bounce back when he's been knocked down. Through all his trials, he's never once forgotten the values or the moral fiber that his parents passed on to him. It made him who he is. Joe helped me manage H1N1 and prevent the Ebola epidemic from becoming the type of pandemic we're seeing now. He helped me restore America's standing and leadership in the world and the other threats of our time, like nuclear proliferation and climate change. Joe has the character and the experience to guide us through the darkest times and heal us to a long recovery. Now, Joe will be a better candidate for having run the gauntlet of primaries and caucuses alongside one of the most impressive Democratic heel time. I could not be prouder of the incredible progress that we made together during my presence. Your word is hit right in Jamaica. I had the same platform as I did in 2008. The world is different 